All right, Merry Christmas from us here at the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. This is my daughter, Ruby. And today we're going to be taking a look at what I like to call thematic games, games with a heavy theme. Uh, some people might call these nerd games, but uh, nowadays that's kind of a, a moniker that, does, that, that doesn't really apply anymore. What kind of games are we talking about? Let's look. are games that have a very strong theme to them. Games that people like and they play them partially because the games are very good strategic games. And that's certainly the case of all the games I'm going to talk about today. But also because you really can get into the theme of the game. And there are many games that the theme is less important and it's more about some really cool things. Think checkers. There's really no theme to that game, but it still can be is a game a lot of people enjoy. These are games that if you took the theme out, I think they'd be a lot less enjoyable. And maybe you know someone who likes this sort of thing and this, these will be great gifts to buy for them. So we're gonna start off with a really interesting one called Crossmaster Arena. Crossmaster Arena is a game that when I first show you the pieces that come in, as you as I set these pieces here, you can see they, they look like little toys. They're fully painted, little figures. There are these cute little animes where the head is as big as their body, and the game comes with a pile of them, and then there are many, many, many expansions where you can get more. Now, this game certainly has a cute feel to it, and for that fact, it's very attractive to kids or, or, or folks who like anime style things. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's something that's very fun. The game comes with some terrain. But the game itself is a very good tactical battle that players will play. Well, they'll take uh, several of these people and fight against other people. Each of them has special powers and you move around and you roll dice that allow you to do different kinds of attacks and, and different spells and different things. And the game is, while light I would, I, you know, I wouldn't consider this to be a heavy game by any sort of stretch of the imagination. It certainly isn't super light either because it allows a lot of tactics and with all the different characters, you'll be able to bring different, bat, uh, diff different things to the game all the time. Now, be warned, this is kind of an addictive sort of game. You get these, your kids will want to get more of them and there are many. I think they're at this point, I think there's like 12 different expansions you can get for the game and all, you know, got to catch them all. Now, they're not randomized and when you get them, they are pretty cool each one has very different powers and such. It's a game that my daughter likes quite a bit, but at the same time, I like it. I, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't care about the cute figures per se, although I do like the fact that they're fully painted, but I like the cool little battle. I like being able to put the characters on the field and go up against one another with them. It's an excellent game and one that people should consider Crossmaster Arena. Now, the next game I'll take a look at is a really big one and that's Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game. Pathfinder the Adventure card game is based on the very popular role-playing game Pathfinder, which uh, came out several years ago and has just been doing well, and in fact, at several points during its history, being the most sold RPG in America. This is a card game version of that same game, although slightly different. In a role-playing game, much of it's about the actual role-playing. This one is more of a kind of an exploration. In this game, you have different stacks of cards on the table, and you have a character card, and your character card will get better. You start with a warrior, and as time goes by, he'll find more equipment. But you have a little deck of cards as your warrior, and you will be adding cards to that deck. And one of the things that makes this game unique from many other card games is that you can save your progress from one game to the next. After a game is over and you've gone through these different decks looking for monsters, fighting monsters by rolling dice and comparing the numbers, uh, when it's over you can upgrade your deck just a little bit or maybe upgrade your character as time goes by. Get better cards and things. And that's a very exciting thing because it's neat because each game is very different and there's a ton of variety just here in this base set. But beyond just this base set, uh, Paizo is going to be releasing pack after pack after pack of cards to make the set more interesting add more cards and as your characters level up to make things harder so that they can handle them. And so this game has like a run where it will be 
be able to go through and I'll be able to start at lower levels and get to higher levels. And this is this big game itself is just the first in a series. So if you know someone who likes role-playing games, this is an excellent choice for them to show them something different. Or if someone likes role-playing games but they don't have the time to commit to that or they don't have someone who wants to be a dedicated uh, game master, this is also an excellent choice because you don't need a game master. The game itself is sitting out there for you and you play and you go through and, and see what happens based on the cards. It's an excellent game. It's a, a very big size game, but I think you'll get a lot of big size fun out of it. That's Pathfinder, the adventure card game. Now, if you like comic books, you'll like this next game, and that is Legendary, the Marvel deck building game. Now I like comic books, and I like the Marvel Universe, and most people do these days, especially with the popularity of movies like The Avengers. And for people who like the comics or the movies, this is a game that it will be probably liked by a lot. This is a cooperative game. So you're working together. Each person controls Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the organization there to stop crime throughout the world. And as time goes by, you will be able to have different heroes come and help you. Maybe uh, Hulk, or Captain America, or Cyclops, or Jean Grey from the X-Men, or Spider-Man, and the game itself comes with a whole lot of different heroes and a whole lot of different villains. You might fight the, the sinister Magneto or go up against uh, evil Doctor Doom, and then there's different kinds of scenarios. You know, maybe Doctor Doom is creating clones, or, or maybe Loki has shown up and is attacking New York with aliens. And So each scenario is it can be very different, and you can pick different heroes. The number of combinations from the base game alone is over a million, and this year they've released two experiences expansions for it, one for the Fantastic Four, which many people like, and the other called, um, the other one with a, a Dark Ages, where they add in a whole pile of, uh, or Dark City, where they add in a whole pile of different heroes that people like from the Marvel Universe, and there's more to come. This is a game in which people are going to like working together, it gives you that feel of superhero uh, fun, and really, now that I've had these two expansions, I cannot see playing the same game twice over my lifetime. It's just impossible, and I think that that's cool. The artwork is superb, it's fun to play with other players, and I think it really does bring the essence of comic books to life. This is a lot of fun, especially if you like comic books, Marvel Legendary. Now the next game I don't have a copy of here, but I've had a chance to play it, and I think it's a superb game. This game is called Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror is probably a sister game to a game that's been very popular over the years called Arkham Horror. Eldritch Horror is kind of a continuation of that and takes Arkham Horror, which if you don't know, is based on the mythos of Cthulhu, the Elder Ones, these giant monsters that come and have people worship them and try to destroy the world and you try to fight them off. This is what this game is. Cthulhu shows up in this game as well as some of his, his uh, wicked brethren. And this game has you going all over the world and trying to find clues and stop things from occurring. So there's a big world map and one of the things that's really neat about Eldritch Horror is that it has a very cohesive cool story in each game that you play. Your character has a story, so as the game progresses, your character, uh, things will happen to it. Even if your character dies or goes insane, other characters can come and, I mean, you'll get a new character, so you're not out of the game, but other characters can come find him and maybe uh, find some treasures that he left behind or, or let your character's story finish out which is just a really neat concept to the game. The game is a long, lengthy, involved one, and I think people are really going to enjoy it, the ones who get involved in the story, because that story just oozes forth from every part of this game. Uh, Eldritch Horror is uh, very similar to Arkham Horror in many ways, but also very different, so I think fans of one will like Eldritch Horror. So if you know somebody who likes horror things, or, or like uh, horror movies or things like that, this is a game I think that they will enjoy because there's so much of that packed into the box. That's Eldritch Horror. Now we're going to cheat on the last one we're going to talk about today, and that's because it's, I'm talking about two games, but these games are remarkably similar, so it all depends which universe you like better. X-Wing, Star Wars Miniatures, or Star Trek Attack Wing. these games play very similar. They're not compatible, although if you play one, you certainly can play the other one. Uh, X-Wing came out in 2012. Attack Wing came out in 2013. 
in both these games, you're going to take different uh, spaceships. In X-Wing, obviously, you have X-Wings and their Y-Wings against TIE Fighters, although they've come out with many ships since. They have the Millennium Falcon and, and Boba Fett's Slave One ship and A-Wings, and there's just a, a pile of ships and more on the horizon. And you will take these miniatures and you will place them on a table and you will use the flight path system to fight against your opponent. Each turn picking secretly how your ship is going to fly, the spaceships fly around, and then if you're within range of someone, you can shoot them. You shoot them, you roll dice, they roll dice, you compare them, and they will take hits and damage and you're trying to blow up the opponent's ships. The same way it is with the Star Trek game, except instead of having X-Wings, you have the Enterprise, or you have Excelsior, you have Klingon ships, or uh, Dominion ships, or Romulan ships. And so uh, there's many differences between the games. Some of them are more subtle than not, like in the uh, Star Trek one, they have shields and the ships are bigger and stronger while the, the, the ships in the X-Wing one, there's more options and they can move around faster. They, they really have a different feel. But if you're looking to get this for someone, it's really simple. I say, which one do they like better? Star Wars or Star Trek? That's the one to get them. I have both games. I think both games are fantastically fun. Both games offer a lot to everybody. Uh, it's fun to take the ships that you've watched in movies and TV shows over the years and put them on the table and play and shoot at each other and uh, use all your favorite characters from Picard to Worf, to uh, Han Solo, to Luke Skywalker. All these characters are in the game, and both games show no signs of abating with all the different ships. You can go out and you say, oh, this is my favorite ship. Well, you go to the store, you look for your favorite ship, and you can buy it. Uh, there's tons of each, and so these are just really great games. That Star Wars X-Wing miniatures game from uh, Fantasy Flight and Star Trek Attack Wing from WizKids. And that's it. These are some great games. Five, well, technically six great games. Uh, you can find all these games at CoolStuffInc.com with great prices. They ship all over the place. Uh, these are the games that, you know, if someone is really likes whatever the subject matter is, if they like the Marvel Universe, if they like Star Wars, these are the perfect games to get for that person. But they're games that are good too, not just, uh, not just a strong theme. So anyhow, we hope you enjoy these. Check out our other Christmas shopping guides. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. This is Ruby, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.